Sorry about that's that. That's huge. Oh, yeah. yeah. Maybe I should start this way. Sorry. Hey, welcome, everybody. It's another Tuesday. It is March 19th. <laughs> Thank you, Martha. Uh, and we're going to talk about the big elephant in the room. What's changed between Friday, March 15th, in how we do business and what we're doing today? Answer in simplest terms, zero, nothing, nada, zilch. You're doing the same thing that you were doing on Friday. I suppose we better not lean on that table. It's going to drive everybody nuts. Um, you're going to do everything that you were doing last week. You're going to do the same thing today. You're going to continue to do that all the way through until we actually get this announcement that comes out and they change the one thing that came up. We will no longer be able to advertise or promote what was always out there for S-A-B-A-N-A. -A -A. That's going to go away. We won't be able to share what we were willing to compensate with all the cooperating brokers. We will no longer be able to do that. There you go. That's the big change. So then the question comes up, how do we get compensated? The same way that we've done from the very beginning. We're going to be able to get it from a listing broker. We're going to be able to get it from the seller. We're going to be able to get it from the buyer. And here's the one thing it said is that we can state the amount of concessions that a seller will pay other than we won't be able to earmark it specifically for the buyer broker's fee. So here's what we do. We go out, we get educated, we build our skills, and we become very strong negotiators for our buyers, for our sellers. And if you will today, we'll even say, most importantly, for ourselves. That's what needs to happen between, guys, as a matter of fact, we were already prepared for this. And we'll talk more next week. We'll be specific to this subject. And I'm going to ask that we come with all the questions and answers and we're going to have an open discussion back and forth. So we'll put that out there for next week. But today, guys, here's the simple part. Keep doing what you were doing unless if you needed to do something different because you weren't making enough money. Fair enough. Apply the KISS principle. Keep it simple, salesperson, and go talk to lots of people. So with that, I'm going to shift gears, and let's get into the highlight of what we got today. Um, absolutely phenomenal. If you saw our promotion, this guy is Paul Walter. And uh, Paul, yep. Let me give some of those silent plus from the distance and the crowd out there. Um, Paul, in, in simplest terms for us to be able to describe, is number two producer uh, for all of Century 21 in the state of Michigan. What was our volume for the past year? We can announce it now. Five volume? Yeah. You want to share that? 20 something million. Uh, something. It was nothing big. It was only about 20 million. A little, little excess of that. Yeah. Um, I usually and change. So and and some change. Yeah. It goes along with yeah. it. So yeah. it wasn't 30. So. Um, so here's what we want to do. This is the interesting part because um, Paul, being newer to what uh, we've been preaching, what I call coaching out there, uh, Deanna, you just started sharing going on here what's people are just doing really weird things man. crazy stuff um so uh one of the things that we've always talked about uh and i know you working with alex in, in yep. regards to coaching which we're going to save that for the end to talk with uh, paul a little bit about what he's going to be able to help you out with there but we always talk as everyone knows active and actively passive active being uh that we're in building our business and uh prospecting in lead generation, we're going to the people to talk to people. Then there's the part that we've referred to as being actively passive. And that's kind of where you get to come in. Yep. yep. Um, but I think maybe before we get into that, what's the Paul Walford story? How long has he been in the business? How did all this come about for you? I've uh, been in the business for about 10 years. Uh, my family, my grandfather started our office back in 86, sold real estate before that. Uh, my dad, broker owner of Century 20 in a row, um, didn't want me to get involved in the business. I was, yeah, I was, I was that right. I was, uh, I was doing marketing for a small medical company and they decided to take my commission away for the ads that I was creating for them. 
uh, and my wife was like, you should just get your license. So I did. Um, and then and, I, and what year was that? Uh, 20, 10 years ago. So 2014. Right, right. Yeah, 20, 2014, 2015. That sounds about right. Uh, first year uh, was a Ruby producer, then a Emerald producer, and then it's been Centurion and Double Centurion ever so, since. So because we got the Blue Crew on here also. The Blue Crew? I love that. <laughs> what What does Ruby and Emerald mean? In regards to the well, it, it's numbers. it's a well, it's a target that's always changing. So as everyone knows, every target you have with the Century Twenty One system, it continually changes. So um, I don't know what it is this year. What was that, it? What was it that year? Um, I mean, a few mil like three million. Three four, yeah, probably yeah. about three or four. About, about three or four million, yeah. Um, so that was that was my first award with the system, and then it's just been. And you did that in your first year? I think my first, yeah, my first full, full year. Full year, yeah, because I I. Got my license like midway through a year, so I had a couple of months to like. I I started out with like Craigslist ads and stuff. Some people know about that in here. Yeah. Um. So I started out with doing like Craigslist ads and things like that while I was working in my other job, just trying to like. So you started out dual career. Yep. Because there's a few folks on here that are dual career, and they're going like Dirk. It's like it's tough. Well, we talk about this all the time. Right. Yep. So uh, heads up for the dual career. What's possible is what you can hear here. So you started out dual career. Yep. Same with what you were doing and slowly blending this in. And you started out just by placing ads. Yeah. So placing anything that was free. So anything that I could do for free, that be, I didn't have the money to do it. I mean, that was part of the reason I was getting involved in the business. And my original goal was to just supplement the income that I, I said, oh, if I could just make thirty thousand dollars a year i'll be happy i'll never want to sell any more real estate than that that was my goal <laughs> um so um that happened so <laughs> made you made the 30 yeah i made the, i made then the 30 uh so i started investing money into paid advertisements so i was doing everything free that i could and then i started taking that money and reinvesting it back into my business so i started so, doing that so right paid up. advertising where where and how much were you in, uh, investing? So I was investing uh, anywhere from $5 to $10 a day in Facebook ads. Um, and then I, I realized that um, I would need a little bit more behind it. So that's where I, I started paying for a system called Commissions Inc. I started doing that. I, I was paying for that on my own because I felt like it was something I couldn't afford, but I needed to do. So I did that sort of proactively. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I've just sort of continually just kept, I kept investing in my business until I could find the way to do things without spending a ton of money. On it. And, and so really, as we put it, being actively passive, um, because the key is that guys, he was doing those things that were out there that cost nothing. And yet some money started coming in. To, did you look at a percentage or just said, this is what I need to do? I, I was looking at it more like I, I knew what my I knew what my bills were. So and I knew that again, like my plan was to make thirty thousand dollars a year, whatever it was. Um, so I'm like, well, whatever. Like it's just extra money. So I'll just start running ads. I'll start trying to figure out ways to generate business. So I did a lot of Facebook ads. Um, continued to do the the Craigslist stuff. Anything that was free to generate business. And I got really good at texting people. So that was, and I, if you've heard me talk, if anyone in this room or anyone here has ever heard me talk, I don't call anyone ever. Um, I never, and I know it drives some people nuts, but I don't pick up the phone. Um, and so I started getting really good at text response or texting people and communicating them with um, with Facebook Messenger. The things that I kind of sold homes just on Facebook Messenger, uh, which is sort of crazy to some people. What's going on here? So let's see. My wife is okay. That's not important, really. <laughs> uh, let's see. So in here we got good morning recording. Thank you, Martha, for that. Can sellers can still yes. By the way, we'll come back to that. But yes, sellers can still offer compensation to the buyer's agents. Happy birthday, Darwin. And can you share a little bit more where else we might have placed those free ads or? Is there anything like that still out there that you do? There is. Um, so you can actually, you can still use the Facebook marketplace. So Facebook marketplace is sort of taking the place of Craigslist. Who goes to Craigslist anymore? No, right? 
I mean, like it's still, I think it's still there. But like nobody does it. You can still place free ads in Facebook Marketplace. You can run ads to homeless. You can run ads to any, or not ads, I'm sorry. You can place offers for things. You can put your listings for sale. You can do all those things and lead generate from there. Um, without sending people to a website or anything. Just so you take the listing, you're going to put that listing out on to Facebook Marketplace. Yep. So you, you would do something like that. So either a listing or a list of homes in an area under a certain price point. Uh, don't include all the photos. And you're going to include maybe the front of the house, the back of the house, and maybe the living room. You don't want to include the kitchen or the bathrooms because that's what everybody cares about. Um, and then they quickly, they just don't care about your ad anymore. Um, so you can do things like that. Like it's still, it's still a thing. You start do, you, uh, do you use anything outside of Facebook? That's one that we've been focused on so far that you mentioned Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, uh, LinkedIn a little bit. So sometimes my content is cross posted to, um, to their Instagram. I was generating quite a bit of business from, um, I was doing about 3 million ish a year just from my Instagram stories that was pulling people out of my sphere. So like just people that were in contact with me already. So I got really big into uh, Instagram stories and then I transitioned over fully to YouTube. So now I'm can, can just YouTube is my thing. So wow. that's, that's my, that's my wheelhouse. So there's over this time, there's the transition over to YouTube. Yep. Um, so let's hold on that one for a bit uh, because we were wanting to make 30,000. We're doing the free advertising, the different place. We talked about, you know, what could those be? So what happened after you started investing into all these other places? Well, so I, I started building, building my business out a little bit. And then I hired my first assistant um, so that she could handle all contract work because like, I always tell everybody don't, don't try to do what you're not good at, right? So, yeah, like, I'm not good at paperwork. I don't, I'm, I'm just terrible. We need to know our weaknesses, right? Right, like in that. So, is, this is administrative. Yeah, so, like, I'll, I married my assistant, by the way. Did you? Didn't know that in the beginning. Oh, but. well, that's good. That's good. Then you must have had a really good uh, uh, work relationship, yeah, right? I, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Um, yes, it is. So, well, my, my wife always says, like, I, you know, I could be your assistant. Like, no, because then... You would, I would need you to help me while we're like out to dinner. We'll, so we'll like, keep our wife separate. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so, uh, so, so I hired my first assistant. I continued to put money into ads. I, I, um, I continued to do my own advertising on things like Facebook, and I still do a little bit. But that's not where my main business comes from. Um, so yeah. So it, it just then from there it continued to build. Uh, where, was there a transition? Did you make do things differently? Well, a, a video came into it. So, so it, video is where things really started to change. So, like face on video, um, and when I realized that I could just continue to talk to a camera and people could, you know, get to know me and my family and my life and everything that I'm doing. Um, so it wasn't just business, business, business. Because I think a lot of a lot of real estate agents have a tendency to just like. These are houses. This is these are the mortgage rates. Like it's everything is about real estate, and then no one really gets to know you and your personality. So I think um, so doing that, like keeping everything open, you know, like it drove my wife nuts at first because you know we we're going to Costco and I'm like, yeah, I'm shopping at Costco, <laughs> but like but it shows that you're a real person, and then people can relate to you. People comment on it. You know, like I found a great deal at Costco, and people are like, oh, that's awesome, and then you're top of mind. So then they start to actively want to watch you and follow. Um, so video became the big thing for you. Um, it, and it's like, there's so much for us to talk about today. It's like, wow, we're, I think we're going to get a little bit scattered because um, there's guys, there's nothing on the table, right? There's, there's nothing here other than the computer in front of us that you guys can see. Um, Paul and I simply said, let's sit down and talk. And, and see what's going on in his business and, and what we hit. So we know today it was really focusing toward video yep. and social media marketing. So you started hitting the video. So what what did you start out with? What were you doing? How were you doing it? Well, I started out, um, you mean as far as video goes? Yeah, the video portion of it. Um, I started doing video. I went to a Jared James event. I think a lot of people in Century yeah. 21 know about Jared James. 
And he asked the crowd, he said, you know, like how many people like how they look and sound on video? No one raised their hand. And they're like, well, that's how you look and sound on video. Big surprise. Um, so you just need to be comfortable with how you look and sound and you just have to continually practice that. So it. that first part is to just suck it up. You are what, what you're doing on camera. That's what they're going to see. Yep. That's what they're going to hear. Yeah. Your skills. Well, like what you and I are doing right now. Yep. It's just, you become a little bit more relaxed and you realize you can just talk to the camera and yeah, talk to the, the people, talk to the camera. Like it's a person. Uh, so weird stuff. <laughs> So I, I, went, I went away to a, a Jerry James event. It was in New Orleans and I made my first ever YouTube, uh, I'm sorry, not YouTube, Instagram story. Um, and he was a big promoter, not promoter. He was a big advocate for Instagram stories at the time. He said, look guys, they disappear in 24 hours. You know, you make this thing, it's going to disappear. Nobody cares about it. Nobody's really watching when you first start. So it's just taking those cracks at it, you know, just making these videos. Uh, getting comfortable with talking to a camera like it's a person because that's what people care about. Um, so that's what I started to do. So I made my first one just talking about the event I was at. Then I made another one walking in the street, which was super uncomfortable. If anyone's like, if anyone here or anything has like tried to make a video while other people are around, super uncomfortable thing to do. But if you think about it like you're on a you know a, a call with somebody, it takes a little bit of that away. So if you're talking to the camera yeah. like you're talking to a friend and you're showing them something, it takes a lot of that away. So it it, it relaxes you a bit. Um, so that's I I continue I sort of making those all the time. I would go and show houses. I would be with my kids. I would do all these things, and I I kept doing that. And more and more people started reaching out to me like, Hey, are you still in real estate? Well, yeah, I was just showing a house yesterday. So really, in the beginning, you were just, as the joke becomes, look at my plate. This is what I'm eating right now. Yep. Kind yep. Of thing. Yeah. I mean, like we would go out. Yeah. I mean, like all jokes aside, like we would go out to eat and I'm like going to this restaurant. I have a, I have a pretty following um, behind my Google uh, food reviews. So like oh, I read, really? yeah, like I review, like I, yeah, like I, I review restaurants and everything. So I've got like millions of views on pictures and things of food so like that it all it all sort of yeah so exactly like look at what i'm eating that it just kind of brings up another real key what are you guys snickering about the food behind us or yes did you earmark a percentage of the dollar amount for your marketing so the the question just came up is now where i'm going to say now where we're at do you earmark a specific amount uh that you're putting toward marketing and advertising so are you asking if i if i did originally or if i do now oh. okay so originally originally again like it was i was brand new real estate agent didn't want to spend a lot of money so i said i can afford five to ten days five to ten dollars a day and like it felt super uncomfortable like i was going to throw up about that <laughs> right and and it had it had to produce something so i had to see something measurable coming in so some sort of contacts or something and um and what i would do is i would I'd run these ads and people would ask about things and i would text them really quickly so I, because i knew that they were on their phones probably right like that was my assumption they were on their phones so i would text them really quick and it would get into a conversation with them so originally it was 5 to 10 dollars a day um, and I have, I have a budget set aside for at every listing that I have now. It's a little bit different because I'm not actively always marketing on places like Facebook. Now I am, and I'll look at you and I'll look at the camera. Um, now I'm doing more YouTube stuff. So it's a little bit different because there's no, there's not a monetary amount put behind videos to push them. Like it's the YouTube algorithm working for me. So I have, I have a, loose budget of how much I'm willing to pay for an editor for how, how much I'm willing to invest in that. Um, but even that, like sometimes I just throw it out the window because like, I know that I can create a video once somebody's going to continue to watch it. Like right now, today, people are watching my videos the second, um, and I'm not there, you know, like, so I know that if I produce a good video, it's always working for me. So for someone that's never done this before, what are you optimizing? Anywhere from a, a good editor is going to cost anywhere between uh, like a good one. Like my la last editor was like $80 an hour, um, but he did really good work uh, and he could brush a video in like a few hours. So I have a new editor um, I've hired that is 
substantially cheaper, but it's a lot more work on my part. So it's a lot of me going in and fixing stuff. So maybe we should transition um, quickly to that direction. As far as like, I'm brand new, $80 an hour for an editor, uh, doesn't quite make sense. Nope. What what should I do as a brand new individual uh, who's like you in the beginning? What do we do if we step back to that point? I would invest my time into learning about simple editing. So things like uh, using apps like CapCut. So that's a really good one to create reels and content. Uh, and I would download, there's a program called Descript. And I'm a huge fan of it. Oh, uh, like, yeah, you know, like Descript. That's called like DE. -E? Yep, Descript. And it essentially takes whatever video you make and it turns it into a Word document that you can edit like a Word document and it edits the video to match. So it's the easiest thing to use. Uh, that's what I would use because I think you can make some killer content with it. Um, I just don't have the time to do it. So, like, it's you know, not something that I want to be doing right now. Makes sense. And I, I know just some of us are going, I don't want to invest anything. I don't even have the money. Yep. Um, if you're a, <coughs> excuse me, PC user, I know Microsoft has uh, Microsoft Clip Champ. Clip Champ. It's free now. Yeah, you can pay a few extra bucks for a few extra features, I think. But it's another one that's basic. It's free. Um, and we'll do a number of things that uh, you want to do. It just depends on, I think I call it a learning curve. I'm telling you, Descript, easiest thing in the world. I mean, you could add B-roll in, you can add anim animations, and it's super easy to use. Sounds, is it an AI program then? It's, it, it sort of an AI program. It, it takes all your, it just takes your footage, turns it into a, turns it into a Word doc. And as you, if you cut a word out, then it'll cut it out of your video. Wow. If you, if you highlight a whole paragraph and you want to stick it at the top, then that's what we'll play first. So it's, um, it's, it's super easy to use. So that's probably something that I would, I would just get good. I would invest my time into learning about things like that so that I could quickly create content. Because I think with, um, you know, to take it a little bit back to the initial topic here of the, of the NAR deal, yeah. um, you're going to have to be an expert in the field. So, so showing that you are an expert in what you do, I think is going to be very important. And if you can do that in something like video, we got we got comments. Yeah, there's a couple new ones that. Uh... Paul, do you have an assistant now? Of course, I have an assistant now. I couldn't do what I do without my assistant. How many deals is that approximately for you? Forty something, fifty something, something like that. Okay. Um, website. I do have a website. How much? Um, uh, what do we? How much do we actually put into that? Is it a static? How much do you have your assistant putting time into that? Um, no, my my assistant doesn't work on the website at all. It's the my website. You mean like as far as like a lead generation source? Yeah. It's mainly. It's not. I don't really use the website for lead gen. Um, it's more of like you go there and you can see like I know what I'm talking about more than anything. Like I, I don't use it as like a search site or anything. You go there and it shows it like I've been on the news and I have this YouTube channel and I can help you buy and sell. So it's uh it's not like a typical website. What what I hear is if somebody's gonna go research me, I gotta make sure I look good there because that's one of the places they look to. Yep. Well, I mean, they're going to use Google, right? So everybody's everybody's going to Google you. Uh, so my my website comes up. You go there. There's only one button on there, and it's to contact me, and, and that's where a lot of the, my reach outs come from. Because the, all of my YouTube videos, it just says go to my website, contact me, or go email me. So that's that's how that works. Yeah, movingmi.com. That's it. All right. So it's in there if you want to check out. It's movingmi. Dot com. That stands for Michigan, guys. <laughs> so you know. Uh, I love it. Um, the the it's D E script, right? Yep. Is the way that is spelled out. Um, how many YouTube videos did we do weekly to get your channel going? One. 
<laughs> and what so one video a week, um, highly researched, highly targeted. Um, I had a whole strategy in mind, and I started I started making the videos at the beginning of COVID. Oh. So I because we you guys remember this we couldn't show houses. Anybody yeah. with I mean anyone new here might not know that, but we could not show a house. So the only thing we could do is talk to people through text or call them. Um, so I was stuck at home and my, my first intentional YouTube video, I made videos like back in, when I first started, I made YouTube videos, but they were laughable. I mean, they're terrible. Um, so my first intentional YouTube but, video. But you know, that's a great point to what you were just saying. You got to start. You do have to start, but I had no, I had no, um, I had no idea what I was doing. Like I had no plan in mind. And when I, when I started creating videos in uh, 2019 or 2020, I knew what I wanted to do. So I sat down in front of the camera and I talked about a city. So I just felt like if, if somebody wanted to contact me about this city, it's got a lot of pros and cons about this city. Um, and then I started creating more content like that. It was frustrating for, to only make one video a week, but that's, that's what I did for the longest time. Yeah. So it's kind of like once you decide that you're going to do this, the best thing you could do is to have a plan. Yep. Yet I, I'm sitting back and thinking, how much do you use this thing? Cell phone, guys. How much is that is doing videos for you? Wait, what do you mean? Well, like we have these cell phones. Yep. It's a simple thing. Um, and I, I've seen some of the things that you do, which... By the way, the way that Paul's talking with us now is the way I see him in his videos, because it's, well, beginning of the morning, it didn't quite start the way I wanted it yep, to. Yep, yep, It was just like we were sitting there in the car and talking with you. Well, so the, the Instagram videos are different than the YouTube videos. So yeah, I don't know if you ever consumed any of my YouTube content. Don't do it, because then YouTube's just going to flood you with it. Um, but my YouTube content is completely different because it's very intentional and it's, it's made for people who don't know anything about an area or, uh, or, or about Michigan or anything like that. So it's a, it's a totally different, um, so that's where you started the plan. Yeah. And, and it's like, so, you know, we're here in Rochester and somebody might say Rochester and then, um, what do they start the subject matter with it? Is it the school? Is it business? Well, so it would be, so if you made content about Rochester, it'd be like, you know, top five reasons to move to Rochester or the pros and cons of living in Rochester or Rochester versus Rochester Hills or um, Rochester Hills versus Novi Northville. Because like these are areas that people are considering when they're moving to, to the Michigan or the Metro Detroit area. So my content is, structured in a way where I talk about the state and then I talk about different counties then I talk about cities then I talk about neighborhoods and then I talk about builders so that I've got this funnel effect where I, I have all these different channels where I create content um, and they, they they might find one video and then they just start funneling through so it's very intentional how those are set up and I'm pointing them to other videos as I'm talking and, and you dropped it it's like don't go there and find mine because you're going to get flooded yep which, I mean, if, when it when it comes to what we want, so it, it's great for the consumer. And like, there's there's real estate agents out there that'll say like, "Hey, all my real estate agent friends, go like and subscribe to my channel." Worst thing you could possibly because you, your peers are not your clients. They're not the people that are going to buy and sell with you. So you want the people who are actively looking to buy and sell real estate to find you and to think of you as the the market expert in an area. So I started creating content about all the areas that I work in and then all the areas that I wanted to work in. And do then they, that's do where they I... start by pushing it out to their sphere of influence saying, Hey, go to my YouTube channel. You recommend that? What I didn't do that at all. And I always say, don't do that. Cause again, the overwhelming majority of the people that follow you on places like Facebook are going to be your peers. So like a lot of, like I have you know, like a thousand real estate agents as my friends. Like I don't want them to. I don't want them to follow that. I don't want all the mortgage bankers to follow my stuff. Right. So I did it sort of in secret to start. Uh, I just started creating and then letting YouTube find the way for me. So like, you know, they, there's areas even in Michigan, cities in Michigan, where I will look up on YouTube just to try to find a, because I get a lot of people contacting me from my YouTube channel to help them move to all areas of the state. 
So I'll look for a, an agent who's creating content in that market. So many of them are just wide open. Nobody's creating. Yeah, because if they're getting you, they're getting you yep. in that location, which yep. is a referral opportunity. Yep. So I, have, likes that idea. so I have a spreadsheet um, and not all of them are Century 21 agents, but I have a spreadsheet of agents that I trust in different markets that people continually contact me for, like Grand Rapids and you know up north, like Torch Lake area. Um, people contact me because they want to move to Michigan and I kick it off. And So the referral right. opportunities are actually coming into you from other agents outside of the market? Well, it's, it's a lot of times it's, it's buyers. So it's, it's buyers or sellers who find my content and then they contact me and they say, well, who do we, because I say in my videos, like, if you want to move anywhere in the state of Michigan, let me know, I'll find an agent for you. Um, and so doing that, I can just kick it off to somebody I know, like, and trust and that. You know, and, that, and, and it's YouTube people are different. Like they, uh, they, they know what they want and they, they convert very easily. So, so let's shift back then okay. away from the YouTube channel for a moment and go to what are you doing on Facebook and what equipment are you using for that specific purpose? So like face, uh, well, you mean like Facebook and Instagram? Yeah. So like Facebook and Instagram is simple because you can just use your phone. It's really easy to use your phone, right? Everybody has, and even my first YouTube videos, my first 10 or 15 YouTube videos were shot on my phone with a mic like this. Yeah. Let's see it. Uh, that plugged into my phone. Or, yeah. So it was like running on the floor up to my phone. It was absolutely ridiculous setup, but it worked. You know, like I, again, like I didn't want to spend money on gear uh, if I was not going to use it because I, I know a lot of people want to buy all the things and then they don't use them. Yep. You know, so you've got the camera and the drone and the different microphones and the gimbals and everything, and then you don't use any of it because it's you just you're overwhelmed. So, phone. It's mainly that's your main thing. And I, I think that's probably a key message is keep it simple because this thing is called a hand and an arm, and it's a great gimbal. Yep. Because all you got to do is hold it out here and use it. Yep. And everybody owns one of these things. I, I don't know if anyone's watched any of the videos where people will uh, explore abandoned buildings or anything. I get sucked into these things, right? Like somebody will uh, like explore some place they shouldn't be, um, and they're always a ter it's a terrible video. It's like shot on a cell phone or something. I'm like, well, I can do that, but like of like a million dollar home, that's a better deal, you know. And I don't have to have like a fancy photographer following me around or a videographer. I don't need to spend all the money on that. I can just, I can show you what I see and then give my commentary on it. And those videos do really well. And a lot of them are just shot on my phone and they're like multi-million dollar homes. And it's not anything fancy. It's just me. Check this out. I've seen a couple with you just getting into your car. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Tons of those. So you got just a. Oh yeah. Yeah. I just flip in for the phone. Yep. Yep. Are you talking about the Instagram and YouTube? Yeah. Stuff? Yep. Yeah. Yep. There are lots of those. Yeah. Just showing my day-to-day -day life, things going on. Well, the one I'm just thinking about, it was like Paul sits on uh, the tax tribunal. Is that the correct term? Uh, the assessor's board of review. Yep. And, and so you were either just wrapping up that final day or had. Yep. And it was not much more than you getting into the car. And I'm, I'm just going, the simplistic things that you do and what you talk about. And so, right. So like that's, and that's just, just explaining what's going on in my day. Like if I'm, if I'm, and I, I need to start doing more of those again, because again, a lot of my business came from that for a very long time. And it's my sphere that that comes from, you know, so it's, it's people engaging with me. Uh, when I, when I post things like that every year, I've been doing that for four or five years now. And every single year I get people reaching out to me about their assessment, about the value of their home, about how, how much you think my house is worth. And so like, how powerful is that, right? Like, right. so even if, even if you're not on your tax board of review, knowing that it's that time of the year and making a, a, a timely video about like, hey, you know, it's that time of year again, you can go and fight your, your tax assessment. Um, it's a powerful thing. Well, and, and that, just that thing that you're staying out there in front of people. And of course, I think that's got to grow your sphere. The people would do business with you it, it it grows um so if you already have a large sphere it just it grows um it grows the engagement with you so if if people want to to follow your story so if you if you start out a story so if you watch that one um i might 
shoot a little bit of it and then not post more of, of the story until later because I want the little circle to light back up later on and somebody to actively want to engage with my profile. Now, when you record those, are you going Facebook Live? Is it a recording and then you're posting it to that? Is it uh, a simple thing that, because you're using the, what is that, storyboard or whatever they call it, tells you how good I am at this stuff. Uh, the storyline well, it's, Facebook? That, well, uh, it's an Instagram, and then it just cross posts over. Gotcha. That, but it's just it's just adding to your. Story. So let's not let that slip by. If I if I do it in Instagram, there's can, something simple to shoot it right yep, to Facebook. It just it just shoots right over to Facebook. Um, so both friends lists see it and uh, and they engage with it only if they want to. So that's what's really powerful. Like it doesn't it doesn't just pop up for them. They have to want to watch want to it see it yep yep so and if you leave them there. hanging so if you if you put up part one you don't have to say part one <laughs> but if you if you say like this is what i'm going to do today let's see how this goes and then you leave them hanging for a few hours and then you come back and you show something so you just get people to continually engage in your profile how many are you doing per day on the instagram the Instagram. The Instagram. Man, I don't know. Never had Please. the. We'll uh, so clear. I'm not doing as many as I as I did before, but I'll, I'll I always caution people to not do too many because when you have all, you know, yeah, when you've got like 30 of them, you're like, I'm not gonna sit through that. You know, that's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Or like, just swipe out of it and go to somebody else. Um, so I'd say like five or six in a day would be, and it it could be something really simple. I mean, it could just be. You know, something right in front of you. It doesn't have to be your face. And, and literally, it's open up Instagram and say, I'm going to do a story or whatever it's called. Yeah, you just, well, you can just shoot it with your, your regular camera. Your, your, not do it in the Instagram. You can just do it with your camera. Yeah. And then you can upload that to Instagram. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't use the Instagram app. I would just do it. So how long does it take? Well, 15 to 60 seconds. I mean, it's really fast. I, and I think that's what, because look, I'll say I'm guilty of it. it. It's like, but there's so much time. But we were talking about something else in the office today here, where part of the issue is, is that we don't know the tool well enough to take the full advantage of it. And then often that will call it, cause us to not even use it. Yep. Yep. It just, it just feels overwhelming if you've never used it. Um, and it's, it's dead simple. It's very simple to use. Interesting. Um, so start out simple, just do it is what I'm hearing. Yep. So the, the, the people that I'm coaching right now, I tell them like, get comfortable. So camera confidence is a thing. So like being comfortable talking to a camera is a thing. So everybody wants to jump in and like create YouTube content or like make long form content. Like, well, just get comfortable talking to a camera first. So just do it, you know, just make video is talking to a camera, whether it's on Instagram or Facebook or anything like that. Um, and then you, you build up so that you, when you sit down and you make a long form video, makes sense. it's easy. Makes sense. Um, then as they know what they're doing, maybe at that point, a gimbal, maybe if you know, uh, because I, I know I've got the, some of you have seen me use them. There's these little mics that'll, USB-C plugs in the end of my phone will plug into the USB-C on a computer and I can go up to like 150 feet away yep. from it but it gives you that mobility where you can still hold the great sound quality yep uh, which frankly you know as Paul and I are using these little things with lapel mics which um, this up. system I oops I just are you, I'm, are you... I muted myself oh I could hear you. I was wondering how long was I muted then? If that was they could the probably case. hear you. They were mind. hearing you through. I yep. bet this is a whole lot better. Um, but these were, I think, like around two hundred dollars to get a two-piece microphone set. Um, these are great, but again, a, a bit more of a setup doesn't really work together with the phone. Um, and yet, there's uh, another Movo set with I've got those little lapel mics. And there's two sets of that, and those were under $100. Um, and again, don't go to that until you're ready to step up in regards to the quality of your yeah, sound. There's so much you can do without having any of that. Yeah. So 
And again, like I, I've, I've watched a lot of creators who just buy all this stuff and then they never create anything. So it's like, just use what you've got. You where, start where you're at with what you've got. I don't know who said that, but I very good advice. So start where you're at with what you've got and just do it. You know, like just start doing something. It, let's shift back to the videos then. All right. YouTube. Um, okay. Because now uh, having visited Paul's office, um, I was shocked at your simplicity. Because I don't want to buy more stuff. Uh, Share what you what what you set up within the office. So in my office, uh, if you go and watch any of my YouTube videos, what you don't see is in front of my face. I have super inexpensive, like these foam pieces that I stuck to the wall, just so that like the sound doesn't sound terrible. Because I'm like I'm this far away from a wall, so it was very echoey. Uh, two LED panel lights, um, and I, because. For anyone who wears glasses out there, if you point them at your face, you're going to get a glare or you're going to get the rings in your glasses. So one's pointed over here, one's pointed up at a little reflector, and then a camera and a microphone. So a camera just like this uh, and a microphone on top of it, and that's it. Which, which by the way, just a, uh, we'll call it, I always, this will take us back, 35 millimeter film, good quality camera. Um, but you don't even need that. You, you could use like, um, what is it, Logitech? Oh yeah, Logitech. Yeah, yeah. Logitech yep. in, in, that we use for doing Zoom meetings or whatever. That there's decent quality. So even if somebody wanted to, those are about a hundred dollars. Yep. The last I checked. Yeah, I mean, and there's ways you can like hook your phone up and use it as a webcam or like stream it straight into. You. So I mean, the the camera on your phone is amazing, but probably better than the Logitech. Thing. So you don't have to have expensive gear to start. And I think that, because again, that was the other part to the simplicity. Um, you know, guys find a great background. You can see what, you know, we're in Rochester. Um, and actually I had this set up in one place and Paul said, what were you thinking? I didn't say it like that. Oh, uh, <laughs> but it was like, no, hey, what about if we use this? Because he's starting to look, here's the natural lighting. So literally, we're looking at the natural lighting, which is lighting our face. Yep. So lighting is extremely important yep. to the quality or appearance to the video. Yeah, lighting and so sound is like sound is one of the most important things because people will watch a poorly lit, terrible video, but they won't do it if it sounds terrible. They'll just they'll go right out of it. So a microphone, or make sure that you got a quality yeah. microphone, yeah. and that. If like if somebody was shooting here in Rochester, they might get the echo where I don't think that you're hearing that because of the microphones that uh, we're using today. Uh, it's something to take a look at. But you're saying then, yep, use what you got. Yep. But make sure you're able to pick up with good quality sound also. And again, so the first first thing I did when I started on my my YouTube journey was I bought a it was eighteen dollars fifteen dollars on Amazon. It was just a it was a lapel mic like this, but it was a wired one. So it just wired right into my phone, mm -hmm. uh, right into the USB-C. And that was it. Because if you're only this far away from the from your yeah, phone. Yeah, three, four feet. It's fine. Most, this yeah. will work. Like So you don't have to spend a lot of money. You don't have to buy the best. Start cheap. Work your way up. Yeah. I, and that's why I say those, uh, you know, these are Movo, M-O-V-O. And we've got the other ones that I've, uh, a couple of the offices have uh, invested into, agents at the offices, dual lapel, so that if you were out, you you could interview, do something to this nature. If I was interviewing Paul, uh, it could be done with this, the little tripods that will have a phone holder. Yep. Uh, you know, make sure that you get the right simplistic. And again, microphones, uh, those were, do a great quality job. Plugs into the phone, plugs into your computer, and you got great sound. Yep. So yep. Um, let's see. Let's take a look, Paul, at what we've got. A uh, question came in. How do I tag an area in my videos to attract people looking for a specific area? Is it the city, a specific landmark? Scott? Yep. All right, Scott. It depends on what you're doing here. Are you talking about Facebook? Are you talking about Instagram? Are you talking about YouTube? They're all different things. Um, 
because when you're when you post something on something like Facebook or Instagram, you can use things like hashtags to sort of sort your content. Um, but it's not like nobody goes to Facebook and searches like best restaurants in Rochester. It's just not a thing. Like there, it's more interruptive than anything. You go there to loot, like you're just bored and you're just scrolling. And if you see something, you might stop on it and you might watch it. So there's a lot of people who put a lot of time and effort into creating content on places like Facebook and Instagram where it's just not going to translate well. Like one of my YouTube videos won't do well on a place like Facebook mm -hmm. because it's just not the same. So like if you are creating content for something like YouTube, it's, it's what you say and how you say it, um, and then your title and your description. So it's you're not necessarily tagging it; you're just talking about that it. catchy thumbnail, catchy thumbnail, catchy title. Um, so if I made a video about the top five restaurants to check out in Rochester, that's me tagging it, right? So like, so somebody's going to watch that interested in the top five restaurants in Rochester. Makes so, sense. So it's a little bit different. But if you put that on Facebook, like, who cares, right? Like. If you if you just had like one restaurant that you featured and it was like cool for somebody to watch, they might stop and watch it. All right, let's see. So that's it for the questions right now. Um, can I can I follow up on that, Darwin, real quick? You talk about and I I I've heard you say this. How many? Well, well, everybody calls them cold calls. How many fizzbos have you called in your career? Well, I've ne I've never called anyone ever. So, oh, wait a minute. So, never called Fisbo. Expired? Nope. Um, like just listed circle prospecting? Nope. Knocking on a door? Nope. I, I'm at risk in saying this because you're all going to go, look what you can do with never talking to anybody. But it's what you did that got people to call and talk to you. Yeah. So, I, I did. I wanted to highlight that. Um, and in, in even doing it that way, you still earn 30000 in your first year. Yeah, well, and when, when you talk about actively passive prospecting, I think it's a good way to describe what, um, what content can do for you because it's always out there. It's always living. It's, it's like a live thing. So like, right, I, I did the, I did the math on it a while back. So like for, and I don't remember the exact math on it, but for every one minute of every day, in the year, people are consuming like five to 10 minutes of my content. So right now in the past 60 seconds, somebody has consumed way more than 60 seconds of my face talking to them about something, about real estate. So it's a weird, it's a weird thing to think about. Um, so oh, it's, 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 yeah. So like there, there's no possible way uh, somebody said I multiplied myself. There's no possible way I could knock on that many doors and get in front of that many people. And I've so those of you who know. So I've been on the news now seven times. So I've been, they've done seven stories: uh, CBS, Fox Two, um, so national and, and local. And those things don't produce any business. For me. And everybody assumes that they will, but it's like a, a flash in the pan. So like a, a story will come out, and then it goes away where my content is alive it's it's always it's always working for me and and constantly building constantly adding yep yep makes sense you know I, mr uh, leach knows you pretty well yeah he's got a question about why not short form media on tiktok all right so i've been i've been doing more research and i plan on doing more short form videos it's just it's a different so it's a different reach to it so if you let's say you make a video about mortgage rates or like a what do they call it the whatever buy down what's the yeah two one buy two down. Down. see i don't even know this stuff the two one buy down everybody's making that content but that goes to like a super wide so if you get a million views on that like how many of those million views are people from metro detroit looking to buy and sell in rochester like this many so it doesn't like, yeah, you might get a, a ton of views on it. It might be really cool for like your ego. Like you might be like, yeah, look at all these people watch my video. But again, like that doesn't mean anything for your bottom line. Like a more timely video would be like best new restaurant that just opened up in Rochester. You know, so like, you know, like that is a, that's a better, like it might not get all the views in the world, but it's, it's going to bring you people that actually matter to your bottom line and to your business. So like, my goal on YouTube is never to be like a 
Mr. Beast or like million subscriber person. Cause like that, like it's, it's not, not where same. you're going to make your money from. Like I, I make, I make a small amount from the YouTube partner platform or program, but that's not, that was never my goal. My goal is not to make money from YouTube. My goal is to like get high dollar buyers and sellers. Like that, sense. that is my goal. Um, so one other question that I want to talk about, uh, the coaching opportunities. I think we'll time this pretty much right. Somebody, um, actually the question was, what would you tell somebody new, but let's go with somebody who's going to start out embracing what you've shared today. What would be the top three things that you would say to move toward? Get comfortable on camera, right? So like, because it's how you look and sound. So don't, you know, don't try to like get around that by just like posting whatever. And so people are going to be attracted to experts in the market, especially in the future, like moving forward, people are going to look for people who actually know what they're talking about. Um, and they're going to want to hire those people. And if you have things out there that shows that you are a market expert, that's good. So get comfortable being on camera, start where you're at with what you've got, right? So if you only have a, a cell phone and a laptop, use that. Like you don't have to go and buy a bunch of gear and stress out about it. And don't, the, I guess my third piece of advice would be, don't try to focus on getting the world to love you. You just need your local people. Like, if everybody in Rochester, Rochester Hills saw your content, that's more powerful than everybody in Michigan and Ohio and California. Like, it's just like, you don't need everybody to watch you. You just need a few good eyeballs on you. Makes sense. Makes sense. And really, when you think of the coverage of our company, it doesn't matter if you're in little old Yale or Morris or all the way over to Manistee people are moving within those areas yep. and, and actually it could be a great way to become the predominant force within those areas. Yep. So, yep. Um, well, last thing, Paul, I, I want to have you share is uh, you came on board, you and Alex got together and Alex twisted your arm into sharing one-on-one. -on -one yep. What you do and helping everybody else do it. And I know we've got, uh, a brand new guy who's bought into it, Dirk here. And you got the oldest guy in the company. Uh, sorry, buddy. I just, yeah. Um, like you said, I'm catching up to you as of today. Um, Happy birthday. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I saw that. Yeah. So what, um, what, what do you want to share about uh, your ability to be able to help people one-on-one -on -one and joining coaching? Well, I, I wanted to do it because... Um, I've all, like I have I have friends all across the country that I I talk to and I help with their stuff and like they'll they'll send me their YouTube videos and YouTube thumbnails and they'll talk about what they're posting and I like doing it so it's like do you want to do like professionally like sure like why not like I I would love to and if it's anywhere from just getting comfortable on camera all the way up to you know if you want to be a dominant force in whatever area as long as you're not coming from my area I'm just kidding <laughs> it's fine. Um, it, uh, it's, uh, I would love to help with it because it's, it's, I, I'm a nerd about, uh, marketing and video creation. And it's something that I'm super passionate about. And I will sit up here for hours talking about like the algorithm and things that you can do to maximize things. And again, like I said about, uh, going into short form. Um, so it's something that like, if I start to do it, I'll want to like really hammer it. So, um, so I would love to be a part of that journey with anybody who's actually interested in doing it. So what do they do? How do they uh, get to you? Talk to Alex, I guess. I mean, I think that's it. I mean, you can send me a message and I'm just going to say, talk to Alex, but so you can talk to me, reach out to me and say, Hey, I, you know, like you to be my coach. Um, I, I'm not taking on a ton of people. So like, I, cause like I still do sell real estate. Um, so but I can I can take on a few more. Uh, so I would say talk to Alex. Alex Sounds good. So reach out to Alex, guys, uh, and uh, we'll be able to get you all set up. Alex, uh, I don't know that we're going to be able to hear you, but uh, everybody else will hear you. You want to throw out uh, the contact for that? Yeah, just uh, email me. I'll put it in the group chat real quick um, at gmail.com. If you are interested, please reach out to me sooner or later because Paul, as you can see, is a hot commodity and he's already been filled up. So he's if only got a certain done, number of spots. Give me a thumbs up because so, literally we couldn't hear. 
Okay. So we are taking on new people and we also have Karina Ball, our SOI specialist here right below me at the left here. She's, she's helping us as well. And she's taking on some new clients as well. So if you're interested in really diving into short form video content cool. and long form video content, we have Paul, we have Karina, as well as I take on the entire, the entire coaching team's video editing as well. So if you want to get to short form, that's kind of where I'm leaning into a lot. And if you want to get your video edited for free, you know, music, captions, B-roll, all that good stuff, that's a part of a perk of being part of the coaching team that's including your costs. So if you're interested at all, if you have any more questions, send me an email and I'll get you some information and we'll see if it makes sense for us to work together.